once you've got all of your connections set up and then you've run through your pre-migration report analysis and are ready to actually begin migration jobs, you can do that by logging on to Fly, over on the left hand side clicking on Migration, and then choosing the type of migration you are trying to run. For our purposes here, I'm going to run a SharePoint migration. Once we come into the screen, we can choose between the different sources up here at the top. In this case, we're going to do SharePoint, and we can pick from the connections we would have previously created under Management, Connection Manager. So I've got two different Office 365 tenants here selected. Now below that, we can click between Site Collections and OneDrive for Business. For the purposes of creating connections, there's really no difference between the two. Back in Connection Manager, you would have stayed on the SharePoint tab, and when creating the connection, you either would have put in a SharePoint URL or you would have put in a OneDrive for Business URL. But functionally, that's the only difference. Once you get here, you can click between the two. We were using SharePoint Online URLs, so I can now click on those to drill down and view the contents below. Now on one side here, we can see we have lists, and on the other side, we have lists. We can click on sites to see if there are any subsites within that site collection. There's one here, and then this other one doesn't have that even apps, and in this case there won't be any apps on either side. Let's say I'm looking to migrate this subsite from this source to this destination. Once I've located it, all I need to do is click and drag across and drop it. And that's it. Down at the bottom we can click on continue, and now we need to select some additional migration settings before we can either save and run this on a schedule or run it now. The first thing is, which migration policy do you want to use? If you have not previously created a migration policy over here on the left hand side, you can create one here by clicking New Migration Policy. Migration policies are made up of things like conflict resolution options for both the container level and the content level. Down towards the bottom, also made up of what are known as mappings. User mappings would remove user information from content in the source as it's transitioned over to a new user in the destination. So remove Ron Delaney, add Bob Smith in the destination. Column mappings can convert between column types. So something was a text column in the source, you want it to be a yes, no column in the destination. You even have content type mappings and then template mappings as well. Down below that, you can pick and choose through some additional advanced options, which includes workflow definitions. Do you want those to be migrated? Do you want to migrate contents, unique permissions, migrate any subsites? So if there's a subsite below this training site that I'm currently migrating, do I want to bring those over? And all of these are just individual choices. Now, once you've created this, by giving it a name and in making all these different decisions and save it, it will be usable again later on in future jobs, but you may also have to create additional profiles because all these different choices may be different depending on the scopes. I'm just going to leave the default in place here. Is it a full or is it an incremental? If you leave it set to incremental, it will have to do a full for the first migration. If you do want to do a migration over a schedule, then down at the bottom, you can choose configure a schedule tell it how often you want that to run, and after the first migration, which as I said will be a full, all the ones that follow will be incrementals. So if you wanted to do a full today and then an incremental every few days until the migration project is complete and you move all of your users over into the destination environment, you can very easily do that. If you are not going to run it on a schedule, even if you select incremental and run this now to do the job one time, Again, it will have to do a full. Down at the bottom, if everything looks good to me, I will click on Run Now, and that will actually kick off that migration job. I can watch its status by going over to Migration Status on the left. And here we have Migration. We can see it is in progress, and that will tick along as it copies over that content, the permissions, and anything else I selected within the migration profile. So that's your basics for setting up a migration job.